So if you're watching my previous video, um, we should be at a situation now where we've got this employee list report on the screen. Um, there's several things I'm not happy about it, but I'm not going to play with this one because it's a wizard. I'm going to show you on another video shortly how you would actually create it manually and get a better result. However, the purpose of this video is to talk about how do we actually deploy this report so people can actually see it now. Well, we've got our employee list report. We've told it to go to a shared data source. So two things have got to happen. The data source needs to be deployed to the server as so does the report because there's no point in having the report without the data source and vice versa. So how do we deploy them? Well we can right click and you'll see deploy is on there but at the moment it won't work. The reason being is we need to set up this project which we're in this HR reports project to actually point to the server in question because remember you could have multiple servers that you could be deploying reports to one server could be in HR um, reports the other one could be finance the other one could be sales etc etc so what we need to do is we need to define the server that we're deploying these reports to so with HR reports highlighted at the top it's very important we highlight here we right click and choose properties now this brings up the connection properties screen and really all we need to do is focus on this section here which is telling us where we're going to deploy things so first of all it says overwrite data source is set to false absolutely um, you could have um, 50 reports all using the same data source so if you accidentally change one of your data sources last thing you want to do is affect all reports on your server so by default it's on false but you can obviously change it to true which basically overwrites the whole thing so what have we got underneath it well we've got the data sources target folder which is called data sources fine that's great so all data sources will be stored in a folder on the report server called data sources let's just jump onto it um, over here so at the moment there's nothing on our report server so I got there by going to localhost depending on your configuration you may have to put a port number in I had to and then it's forward slash reports and then you will get this page up if you haven't got this you may want to have a look at my configuration video to understand how you would set it up for first time use so back in here what I need to do is um, leave it on data sources there what's the target report folder HR reports sounds good to me and really the target server so at the bottom it actually tells you what you really need to type in here for example HTTP colon forward slash forward slash server name forward slash report server so what that's telling me then is I need to put it to this particular location um, but obviously replace server name to whatever it is so I'm gonna put in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash I'm gonna put in local host because I'm on my local machine however you may need to put in a server name I'm gonna then do colon the reason I'm gonna do colon is because I've got it on a different port number remember if I just bring back the report and uh, the web browser I've got it here on 8081 so in here on my um, bid section I also need to tell it to be 8081 if you're just going to localhost don't worry about ports whatsoever the reason you have got to have ports as discussed in the configuration video is purely because you could have multiple servers running on the one box and generally 80 which is where it would default to go to would be exclusively for web services now because this isn't technically web services anymore because it's 2008 um, I've had to shunt it onto a different port number so after the forward slash here I'll just put in report server and all being well I'll just click on apply and OK liked all of that so let's just try it now you could deploy individually or you could just right click at the top here and choose deploy so I'm going to just do that deploy now what deploy does is it also builds the project notice now in my output window I have a series of um, commands coming up where it's saying it's deploying and building what's important about building it error checks it checks your syntax it makes sure that as far as it can tell it's fine doesn't necessarily mean your reports right um, but it has passed the test and um, so what it's happened here is I've built complete with zero errors it then starts the deploy process it says I'm going to deploy to this location I'm going to deploy the adventure works to the data sources folder that we agreed upon and it's going to deploy the employee list report to the HR report section so at the end of that it said it succeeded zero failed and zero was skipped great let's have a look then so let's just jump back into our web browser so localhost forward slash reports and I'm just going to click on refresh now and all being well I should have now at least two new folders 
and there we are. Notice they say new and I have data sources and I have HR reports. So let's just have a look at data sources and there's my DSET Adventure Works and if I just click on it it will then go into the properties of it so here's where it gets interesting because you can now go via the report manager go in and change things for example the location of the server so you may be using a test server to start with so the data source is on my media server but I may have a live server later on so I can if I wanted to change it to a different data source and also the initial catalog being the database that it connects to. I'm just going to um, click away um, not to do those changes and go back in and what have we got further down? Well notice it's saying Windows integrated security so what that means is if I run that report now it will use my Windows account to use the data source connection now this is very important if you're working in a network for example I'm the administrator I can deploy reports to the server I can now run those reports however Fred blogs who has only user access may not be able to run the report because you're using Windows integrated so what would happen is he would start up that employee list report but then not be able to connect to the data source because Fred Bloggs' account does not have access to this location. So quite often in reporting services you don't leave it on that. You actually either choose a credential supplied by the user running the report and then set up um, a um, username and password so they have to um, type in a username and password of your choice or alternatively use credentials. So quite often what I would do is I would actually put in a domain and you wouldn't use administrator for those of you which are um, really tech savvy but for this purpose I would say put in um, the administrator in the domain and the password that it's using and then I would actually say use as Windows credentials when going to the data source that way then anybody that runs the reports would go via this account to the database well because I'm on the actual um, server myself and it's just for training purposes I'm going to leave it on Windows integrated you could put it on credentials not required but I have had no reason to use that that is one of the most unsecure options on the planet so let's just leave it on Windows integrated now you can apply you can move it you can generate model model will be discussed in a much later video and you can delete well I don't want to do any of those things because I've not changed anything so I'll just click back on to home at the top here which will take me back to the main screen so let's go to HR reports and there's my employee list so let's click on it and all being well it should now using my account cr credentials go to the data source then from the data source to the database and all being well there's my employee list on the screen so what we've talked about on this video is just simply how to deploy a report and that just to summarize is back in bids you would right click on the project nowhere else but the project choose properties and then in this particular area of the dialog box you would specify the name of where the data source is going to be kept as regards the folder ditto for the report i.e. the report folder we want to go to and then finally the target URL the location of where the reports are going now just one brief um, thing to finish on is you'll notice that I'm saying report server whereas in our web browser we're going to the report manager which is just called reports well hey let's just change the URL at the top and just choose report server what you get is exactly the same structure but it's not nice it's in a horrible horrible format it's just a standard file list so I can go into data sources but at which point I can't really do much with it it just shows me how the actual RDL script or in this case the XML script is um, configured so if I go back and back again go to HR reports there's the employee list that will run as a report um, but what you'll see is I've lost all my toolbar options at the top so report server is another way you can access information and quite often gets used when you're dealing with SharePoint um, integration um, so can you use it yes for these videos at this early stage we won't be touching report server again but suffice to say you deploy to one location you can actually view them in there so next video we'll move into creating the report from scratch so I hope you stay tuned <laughs>